Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, April 30th, and I've kicked the camera a couple of times. Sorry about that. <laughs> it is a rainy, cool day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. You can see I'm a little overdressed for usual, but it was chilly this morning. And uh, damp and chilly, which I don't like. But, uh, oh, my wife would be so angry at me for wearing this. I love you. Ah, uh, so anyway... Sunday, April 30th. My goodness, how did, uh, I don't know. Time is moving so quickly. I hear a lot of people say that. It seems to be a uh, phenomenon of sorts. As you might be able to tell from the billowing smoke, I am smoking crooner this morning. Uh, hopefully my wife will not notice. And I have my uh, Phil Rivera uh, pot, which is a lovely pipe that I really enjoy smoking. And uh, I'm smoking it today because I needed to bring it down and, and ream it. I noticed last time I cleaned it, it was the cake was getting a little bit out of out of control, so I reamed it, refilled it with uh, <clears throat> with creener, and it's smoking beautifully. And I'm smoking because I like it. And as usual, I've got some 8 o'clock coffee. And I've got a bit of a frog in my throat this morning. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, allergy. Allergies have been uh, bad this year already. Already, I guess this is kind of the peak season, but uh, my wife calls it blooming season. And uh, yeah, it's been it's been rough. Uh, not I I I take um, I take allergy medicine, so I'm I'm okay most of the time. But occasionally I get this sort of a problem. It's not like I'm suffering. It's just my throat uh, clogs up. I lose my voice sometimes, just temporarily. I got to clear my throat. It comes back. Anyway, <clears throat> <clears throat> forgive me for that and try to suffer through. <laughs> there we go. So uh, yeah, crooner, eight o'clock coffee. So I, uh, my, my video last week was a bit different than, than usual, but I enjoyed it and a lot of folks did, uh, talking about Earth Day, or I guess an alternative view. And something happened uh, along the way during the week that I thought was interesting and wanted to talk about a bit today. So the comments that I got on that video were, all positive, uh, you know, and and I'm sure that people disagreed, and, and that's fine, and, you know, please do disagree, but every comment I got was positive, except for one. Uh, one person told me that uh, I'm wrong, um, they've lost respect for me, and they're thinking about leaving, I guess they mean unsubscribing, and, you know, that's fine, um, and I responded to them, uh, you know, by all means, don't watch if you don't like it, uh, if you think I'm wrong, give me some factual reasons why I'm wrong and we can have a discussion and that's good because when you discuss things like this, both sides can learn. Uh, and that's, you know, I like to do that. And uh, I sent that comment and by the time I hit send on the comment, the comment had been removed and my subscriber count had gone down by one. So I guess I really ticked somebody off. Um, by the end of the week, my subscriber count was up by 11 over that. So, it, uh, you know, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't care about the subscriber thing. I just, you know, when the comment was deleted, I thought, and I was a round number too. You know, it ended in a zero and now it was ending in a nine or something like that. So it was, it was noticeable. Fine, fine. Uh, you know, I think people vastly overestimate the reasons I make these videos. I make these videos because I enjoy it and because it's therapeutic for me. I get to talk through things that I otherwise wouldn't be able to talk through. If either of those reasons goes away, you won't see me again. I, I'm sorry. I, I love this community. You'll probably still see me like Friday nights because that's more of a social thing. But these kind of videos, I don't know that I would waste my time on them if I wasn't enjoying them. Um, now they entertain you and you like them and that's wonderful, you know, and that makes me feel good that people out there 
look forward to these and watch them and comment and everything. That That's wonderful. That's part of the enjoyment of it. So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I don't care about the audience, but I do this for me, you know, bottom line. And I think anybody out there that's honest would say the same thing. Community is wonderful, but we don't do this because, you know, oh gosh, I got to go make a video so that everybody's happy. Nobody does that. We do it because we enjoy it. And I'm going to talk about what I want to talk about. And if you don't want to watch, don't. That's fine. <laughs> so it got me thinking. And it got me thinking about what I just said, what I wrote in the comment. And I said, you know, I'm not really being honest. What I just said, if you don't want to watch, fine. It's not really true. Um, we are creating bubbles. And, and the interwebs are creating bubbles for us. And it's terrifying. When you really sit down and think about it, it's terrifying. So... I'll give you an example from my own experience. So I have another YouTube channel that I never put content on. I just use it for my interest outside of pipe smoking. So I watch machining videos and woodworking videos, fly tying videos, uh, and also religious uh, videos because that's an interest of mine. I'm very interested in Catholicism, both like current going ons and goings on in the Catholic Church as well as historical um, and educational things about Catholicism. Uh, I'm also interested in other religions, and I've got a strong interest in comparative religion and things like that, but I don't watch a lot of those videos. I, I, I like to read about those things rather than watch videos on them. So most of what I watch is Catholic. And when I go to home on YouTube on that channel and I look at, you know, what's suggested for me, it'll be Catholic, 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 and then woodworking and, you know, everything else. But I never see a Lutheran video, I never see a, an Anglican video, I never see a Buddhist video. If I want to watch those, I have to look for them. Why is that? Well, if you don't think about it, and this is an extreme example, but I'm using it for illustrative purposes. If you don't think about it, you might start to think, well, gosh, I guess everybody's Catholic. You know, I guess, well, I know not everybody is, but maybe there's just not as many of those other people as I thought. And, you know, or maybe they just don't, they're not interested enough in their religion to make videos about it. I guess I'm in the majority. I guess, yeah, I'm, I'm in the majority. That makes sense. It doesn't make sense. You're seeing what YouTube has decided you want to see. And that's with somewhat good intentions because, you know, you're going to watch more videos if the videos that are suggested to you are things you're interested in. It's also a bit nefarious because there's ads mixed in. What really scares me, and I don't know if this is true on YouTube, but I know for a fact that this is true on Instagram and, and Facebook. You know, Instagram is set up so you've got this rolling, you know, you, you move up and there's another picture and you move up and there's another picture. And it's a mixture of people you follow and people that Instagram thinks you might enjoy following, as well as ads. And uh, these little reels that, you know, they're, they're like thumbnails of the reels, which do move, you know, so, so if you stay on it long enough, you'll see the person, you know, hey, here's my pipe and things like that. And, and then it goes on to the next one. I think you see three or four of them in a row. What these algorithms do is they actually measure how long you pause on those things. And of course, if you click on them, but just the amount of time you spend looking at an image or looking at one of these little real thumbnails changes what you see the next time. So if yeah, th this actually happened to me uh, probably two years ago, maybe three, when, when I first started seriously looking at Instagram and, and using it. I first started posting on Instagram. I don't know how long it's been. Um, <clears throat> I got shown um, a couple of Muslim things and I didn't quite know why. Uh, they weren't pipe smoking, but it was, you know, clearly uh, people in traditional Muslim dress and there was some writing on the, the, the 
the image that was that was Muslim and and if I looked at the description it was I shouldn't say Muslim I don't actually know what the language is I'm sorry I'm very ignorant about this it might be Farsi might be Arabic I don't know um, but I can't read it and but it was curious to me and then there were more of them and I started to like click on them to see like is there any pipe related stuff in here and then it got like a little overbearing like it was maybe 30 percent of what I was looking at now it was nothing offensive it was nothing that you know but it wasn't anything I understood and I thought well why am I seeing this and then I realized it was probably because I was looking at it you know, I was just I was intrigued by it and curious about it and the more I looked at it, the more I got to see. It happened very quickly. I mean, this is over the course of a couple of days. So, yeah, these, these online interweb systems are shaping what we see. And the problem with that is it shapes what we think the world looks like. We're living in bubbles. We always have. It's just getting worse now. So when you see something you disagree with, depending on what it is, you know, if it's something like a core belief or something, sure. But if it's, you know, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Republican and you Democrats are all stupid. Maybe look, I don't know, that's a little harsh, but, um, you know, top 10 reasons why your candidate is whatever. Or even better, I'm going to Take the time to break down the reasons why I believe that this candidate is better, or I believe that this religion is better, or I believe that this approach to environmental preservation is better. Watch that video if you disagree with it, and think about it. And maybe you'll come away thinking differently, or if not, you'll come away more strongly grounded in what you believe, and that's important. No belief unchallenged can persist. I just said that, but it sounds like something I read somewhere. <laughs> no belief unchallenged can go per can persist. Yeah, I believe that strongly. Challenge it so it can persist. <laughs> anyway, I, I just I wanted to get that out there because I think it's really important. I, I worry about these bubbles that we're living in because we're 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 making decisions based on them, thinking this is the way the world is, and it's not, and it's very hard for us to find out the way the world is anymore. So, try to find that real world and try to live in it. And while you're doing that, try to enjoy some crooner. And if at all possible, enjoy your crooner in a Phil Rivera pipe. It sounds like a, an ad. <laughs> this video is sponsored by, no, it's not sponsored. I just like Phil, he's a good guy. And you make a great pipe. So, Sunday, raining again. Weekend rain is a problem this time of year. Haven't done any gardening work at all. Uh, my seeds that I started, they didn't do very well. I've got one banana pepper plant. That's it. So, I might try to plant some of the like radishes and things like that in the ground. Uh, Oh, I've got some, you know what I got? I've got some sweet potatoes growing, which is kind of neat. I, I was, I took out a sweet potato to peel it and it had a couple of those shoots coming off of it because my wife forgot that she bought it. And I just stuck him in a pot that we were growing something else in that didn't survive. And uh, these things took off. They're, I've got two sweet potato plants right now. So I'll, I'll see what happens with those. I've never grown sweet potatoes before. We'll see. And... I'll pick up some stuff at the, the garden center when it stops raining and, uh, and grow some peppers and things like that. We'll plant beans. It'll be fine. But it's a good thing I don't have to survive on my, my own uh, garden. And uh, I know Cliff Higgins will, uh, will surpass me once again because that man's a farmer. So today, maybe do some shop work, maybe just... Uh, putter around a little bit. Uh, in terms of shop work, I've been working on these purple stems for 
a, a good friend who asked me to make him a couple of uh, filtered saddle stems from the Suri Mirsham cobs. And I said, sure, I can do that. And if you remember last week, I had to throw out, I think it was nine blanks altogether because the acrylic was crumbling around the airway. Um, it was a bad batch of acrylic. It definitely was. But I made uh, a stem yesterday from a new batch of acrylic, actually using some of this uh, Eldritch resin from uh, Chris Kelly. Beautiful stuff. Works beautifully. And uh, yesterday I did some, you know, final rough shaping on it. And I thought, well, let me just test the area that was crumbling just to make sure I'm not, you know, I'm... Yeah. Too thick went straight through both sides. <laughs> it looked fine. It looked fine. But I just poked at that area and it went and just slid right through. I, I'm going to keep that one. So... It turns out that I, I've never made a saddle stem with a Missouri Mirsham style filter chamber. And it was just a little bit, well, it was a lot too thin, but I hadn't realized just how thin it had gotten. Now, a good acrylic, if I had made it, and I'm glad that I made it out of the crappy batch of acrylic because I could have, I could have finished this. I would not, if it, if it hadn't been for that previous experience, I would have never done this. Uh, so thank goodness I did, because that's a terrible flaw that I would have sent out. Um, I just, the design was bad. The chamber, the filter chamber extends too far into the saddle region. So uh, I got back to the guy and I said, you know, you got a choice. You can either have a ch filter or a saddle. Because if I make the chamber shorter, it will not, it, it just won't work right. So uh, he opted for the saddle. So we're going to make, we made some new blanks they're drilled but uh the tenons epoxied in and now i gotta re-drill it because the epoxy gets in the airway i gotta cut the slot all that good stuff but i got two of these and we'll hopefully get those knocked out this week and get them off to him because the poor guy's been waiting a long time but i want to uh tell you i've decided during this process that i'm not making cob stems anymore <laughs> Or at least I'm not going to make them as commissions or whatever you would call this. This is it. This was just a friend asking for a favor, so it's not. It's not like a, I'm taking orders or anything. But I don't. I don't like doing that because when this stuff happens, I feel bad. You know, I'd rather just, as I have time, I'll make some cob stems, and if they turn out, I'll put them up on the website. And if you want them, you can buy them. Turns out I'm not good under pressure. <laughs> as far as the thoughts on reopening the business, I'm going back and forth on that still. Because I said I was maybe just going to do like a pipe tune-up and a simple cleaning, nothing that would take a lot of time, no stems. And to do that, I have to update my website. I have not had the time to update my website, and I realized, well, heck, if I don't have the time to update the website, I don't have the time to be working on the pipes. So, that's probably not going to happen for a while, if it happens at all. i got to think about this seriously. Because, just like what I said about making the videos, I do this for fun. I do it to help people. It doesn't make money. You know, it, 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 I barely break even with it. And that's fine. I never wanted it to make money. I just wanted it to pay for itself. And it, it has. You know, when I, when, I make, when I repair a pipe for someone and I charge them what I charge them, it pays for the supplies, uh, the equipment, and, and, you know, a little bit for my time, but not very much. And that's fine. I'm happy with it. But I don't want stress. I don't want, I got enough stress in my life without adding to it for, with my hobby. Anyway, that's where we're at. I'm almost done with this career, sadly. And I gotta go see what Sunday holds, so. I wanna thank you for joining me, whether you agree with me or disagree. 
I wish you all a wonderful Sunday and a fantastic week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.